It's time we give back. Someone see and show someone where the love's at. Even if you don't give a dime, give your heart and share your time. Help somebody else in life give back. Let's give back. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Ignite, Empower, Transform. I am your host, Hosea James Gavan II. On our show, we showcase urban superheroes here in the Bronx and around the world. Today, we have a very, very, very special guest, one of my dear friends and fraternity brothers, the amazing Dr. Maurice absolutely, absolutely. Henderson. <laughs> own it, amazing. own it. <laughs> How you doing, bro? Uh, I'm doing just fine. Good, man. Pleasure to be here. Oh, man. I mean, we've been talking about this moment for at least four or five years. Yes. And yeah. I was finally able to get you up from Philadelphia by way of our next guest, who's also on this episode. We'll talk about him in the next episode. But, bro, you have so many accomplishments, so many things we can talk about. But I do want you to talk about the National Men of Color Association, which you are president of. Well, you know, so this is my first time introducing the National Men of Color Association here in New York. That's so dope. I had to come down to the, bo the Boogie Down Bronx. But you know what's so cool about that? Yes. When we did our, the reverse of, the, of, of, true. of Give Back, That's we true. did that in Philly. Philly. Yes. Now you, yes. oh, yes. see how you see how things work? Yeah. So, so, so I consider New York to be my, my second home. Of course, I went undergrad and grad um, here um, uh, in, in New York. And so, where'd uh, you go? I huh, went to Delphi, Shout uh, out. A Delphi University in Long Island, New York, mm -hmm. and New York Institute of Technology. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's a pleasure to be back here. It's always been my um, my stomping ground. Mm -hmm. And I have another surprise for you. Okay. I'm all so about the, surprises. So, sometimes. The next, time, next time you see me, I will be on Broadway. Get out of here. Yeah, so, on the fall, um, uh, we're working on coming to Broadway to do some fundraisers for some um, non nonprofit. Uh, we have to put the message out there that there are some good black men still around. Oh, we need that and message loud and clear. We got to push that forward Absolutely. as much as, as father, I mean, as much as possible. So, you know, as a father, as a grandfather, um, and as a male leader, it's my job to let the people know the goodness of God mm -hmm. is going to come back to them. Amen. And the best is yet to come. Yep. So um, we're doing a piece called uh, Say It Loud, Being Black, Been Proud. Okay. And, you know, we're going to say a lot of things loud. Um, we're going to tell it, it like it is. But we're really trying to save the children. Yeah. It's so important that we work towards touching them mm -hmm. um, in the appropriate manner, <laughs> hearing their feelings, <laughs> uh, hearing their emotions, and see what's going on in their mind. Mm -hmm. We're suffering from noise pollution. From what? Noise pollution. Okay. And every place we go, we hear loud sounds. We don't hear peaceful sounds. Right. Like, thank you. Please. It's right. a pleasure. Hello. Get out my face. So, no. I want us to start to work towards saving the children. That's why the Give Back to the Kids campaign and what you're doing with your book is going to be very, very important because we need to teach civics and service learning. No question about it, man. Um, you, have, you have several certifications. You also are a professor. Uh, you have a doctorate degree, uh, and let me once again go back to how we kicked off our campaign in, in 2012. Uh, we had uh, the, the video that we used a portion portion of it to open up this show. We did that, took a national tour, yes. and you hosted us in in Philadelphia. And I just want to say, on behalf of all the people that are connected with the National Give Back for Kids campaign, we truly appreciate you the way you opened up the city of Philadelphia for us. No, man. you called me and said, I'll be there. <laughs> okay, that's what happened. <laughs> that's how I opened up. No, but see, um, it was just a, an occasion because the whole city got together. Yes. And you did a lot of different events at different places. You did PBS. You did mm -hmm. uh, P PSTV. So as a matter of fact, so you all need to know, there's something called public school television that's all around the country and a lot of it is in public schools. So he did come to Philadelphia and for almost six months, he was running on public school television locally and nationally. So I think I got, I got sick of seeing it because it was like 10,000 times, you know, but I said, you know, it's cool. Which you means know. it was 5,000. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> um, you know, so I think that um, it's a time for us to discuss 
discuss black folks, black power, and black love. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. how how's law strayed or stolen, and um, we we got to do something, man, to engage young people in our families as a unit and unify them in the home, school, and communities, children, youth, and families. Without question, and you know, one of the the main focuses of our efforts is just kind of what you're talking about, how we can, there's a, there's a void of grassroots leadership within our communities. And we have to somehow figure out a way to nurture and develop grassroots leaders in our communities because part of the problem on a block to block basis, like when we were growing up, we had great men, great yes, women yes. on our block. It wasn't yes. coming from outside, coming in. They were on the block. That's not the case today. You know, and as a result, we have to figure out a way where we can kind of go into the communities, help to identify leaders, train leaders, so they can be able to do the things that were done for us yeah. when we were kids. Because that's one of the, I, everything we do at the National Give Back for Kids campaign is for me, trying to recreate as much of my childhood for these young people mm. as I can. And we came up in a time, we just talked about Offset, when we were growing up, we had the Black Power Movement, the Nation of Islam, we had uh, the women's rights movement, we were on the tail end of the civil rights movement, and we had a lot of energy in our community that was revolving around how we can empower yes. each other yes. and support each yes. other. Now we have to recreate that, because that was naturally in the air back in the day, and it's, 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 it's a tall order. You know, it's a so, tall order. So my mentor is um, Queen Mother Flock of Attire, mm -hmm. and know. she is like 95 years old, wow. and she said that we need to start having block parents and designate a great idea. who is going to be the parent of the block instead of when the parents are not around. And I, I found that to be um, really important because we got newsy neighbors. <laughs> now, now, now we know. Now we need right. to get a, a block parent. And we I need think concerned that, neighbors. Yeah. Well, See, this is the issue. We, was, we, were, we were discussing, of course, we came in the limousine. We were, well, know, that's, the, uh, that's the way Alphas <laughs> roll, you, you know, know that. Yeah. You know, but then we were discussing the whole uh, idea about who's going to be responsible for the children. Right. So if they're so concerned, then the whole idea is that they know who's doing what in the community. Mm -hmm. It should be stopping. So I, I see them as being unconcerned. And maybe we need to have some, some more concerned neighbors, concerned uh, politicians, to be in the streets, to be out there talking to people, going door to door, boots to the ground. I mean, so anything that I ever do, I always go back to the neighborhood. I go to the pool halls. That's my personal business, okay? <laughs> um, Keep it and, clean. You know, you know, this is G-rated, and, 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 and so, PG. You know, I go to the gym. I go to the barbershops, I'm always passing out information, mm -hmm. asking questions, um, trying to figure out what issues are most important to the community dwellers. Can you hold on to that thought? Uh, we're going to revisit that in the third segment. Next segment, segment we're going to bring Brother Oliver in, and then the, the last segment, we're going to have you both in. All right? yeah, so I, hold on to that thought. It's going it's to be about eight minutes, but hold on to okay, it. Okay, because I can't wait. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we'll be right back. Jason, let's go see your room. Excuse the laughter in the background. <laughs> Welcome back to the segment of Ignite and Power Transform. I am your host, Hosea James Gavan II. And in this particular uh, episode, we have two guests from the city of Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Our second guest is Mr. Richard Oliver. He is also a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity. What's going on, brother? Hey, man. How's everything? Everything is good, man. I want to thank you for joining us, bro. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to be here. No doubt, man. No doubt. So. Uh, According to Dr. Henderson, he prepared your bio. You have over 100 certifications in yes. various things. Um, you're also the uh, president of the Para Pet Group, yes. which is a security-related firm. You mm -hmm. want to talk about that? Para Pet Group, it's a security company uh, 
a law enforcement training company based in Philadelphia. Uh, we provide armed and unarmed security, Pennsylvania, Delaware, New Jersey. Uh, we also train civilians uh, from children to the top elite armed really? professional. And we've been doing it over 20 something years. Okay. 25 plus years actually wow. and uh, like I said we actually train children all the way to the elite professional uh, we're NRA instructors uh, mm -hmm. I lead instructors I left the instructors uh, law enforcement training instructors and uh, the NRA has a program that's called Eddie Eagle and it's about 40 to 50 years old where they train children from kindergarten to eighth grade on gun safety so it doesn't advocate gun ownership it mm -hmm. just advocates gun safety so you may not have a gun in your home but your child may visit a relative an aunt or someone else and they may have a gun that's unsecured in their home so mm -hmm. it's something that they've figured out and been doing for so many years and changed I'm um, trained tens of millions of children in gun safety. Mm -hmm. Stop, don't touch, run away, and notify an adult. And that's something that we really need in our urban areas. Right. So we're, uh, you know, advocates for that. And with the NRA, I'm an NRA instructor in every certification that they have except for muzzle loading and reloading. So okay. I train in everything from refuse to be a victim, handgun, shotgun, rifle. Uh, personal protection inside the home, outside the home. So everything that they have an instructor certification and I'm an instructor in except for those two things. Okay. Uh, okay. Muzzle loading and reloading. That's, That's cool, it. man. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I actually took my first gun training course about about two years ago when things are starting to get a little unsettled in this country. Okay. <laughs> I said, oh, I may need to get a gun. The COVID scare. Uh, COVID, there's, COVID there's scare. a little yeah. more than COVID. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about the political climate that's right. in this country right mm -hmm. now that has people on edge. And my father, he never had a gun in the house because he felt if he had a gun in the house, plus my mother was there and he was not, it might have been an issue. But, right. <laughs> but he never wanted a gun in the house because he felt if he had a gun in the house, he may have to use it. Right, and that was that was one of the deter deterrents for us in terms of just our mindset in terms of gun ownership. But as as I just mentioned to you, this world is getting crazier and crazier. Uh, as we thought we were going forward, things are going backwards. Right, and uh, the need for security and the need for protection is probably at an all time high. Certainly within the last 30, 40 years, in terms of. And, and I'm talking about in, during the crack era, it was very dangerous in many urban cities, but it's a different type of energy today. Right. And it's scary. Uh, they're talking about a civil war in some places, you know. Right. Uh, how, how, do, how do we, today I was just looking at, at uh, the CNN and they're talking about teachers being armed. Right. You know, going back to what you said mm -hmm. about how, uh, do we really want people that are not prepared or not properly trained to have have guns? Is that is that part of gun safety? Well, when they're talking about teachers being armed, they are talking about trained training the teachers to be armed. Mm -hmm. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I remember growing up in school mm -hmm. uh, in the eighties and in Philadelphia this the population was different. So in Philadelphia right. in the eighties there were over two million people. That's not the case now. Right. There were less high schools, but uh, there were more school-aged children, and we had a police officer armed in all the schools. That's no longer the case, and we see that the violence today is much more prevalent right. and much more rampant. So I don't think that uh, necessarily taking uh, armed people out of school is making it safer. Uh, I think it's less safe, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that to be the case, uh, I remember going to Six Hour Academy in uh, New Hampshire, uh, maybe 15, 20 years ago. It was after 9-11 and they were training the pilots to train guns. So I was uh, actually there when they were training and the air marshals have a, a training facility at Six Hour Academy and I was watching the uh, pilots train and I think it's a good thing. Someone being trained in an armed professional, I think is a good thing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, as far as citizens being trained, first, you're the first responder for you and your family. It's right. not 911. It's right. 911 after something has already happened. Correct. So if you're self sufficient and you're self aware and you're self reliant, how are you going to take care of yourself 
and that's just one more tool. I have a spare tire and a jack in my truck and I never want to use it. I'm going to call triple A. Right. But in an emergency, if something happened and they were hours away, I'm going to use it. Right. Uh, they, you know, there's all kinds of slick sayings. Uh, when you call 911, a cop, it's minutes away, but you need one in seconds. Right. The same type of thing. So it's just being uh, self-aware, self-sufficient, and self-reliant. Right. And if you're trained, uh, you're trained to drive an automobile, and depending on what state you're at, 16 years old, 17, 18 years old, and you're trained to drive an automobile, you have to be trained with your firearm. Right. And we forget that uh, Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts, they're trained for over 100 that. years in this thing. And we forget mm -hmm. that this stuff is an Olympic sport. Shooting, air right it's an Olympic sport. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so let me ask you about, there is there is a proliferation of guns within our community, right? Yes. I, and uh, many uh, uh, groups are calling for gun control laws because they feel that there's such a saturation of ga of guns in our community, and you're part of NRA, which is part of the Second Amendment, right? The Second Amendment is 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 the uh, amendment that the right to bear arms, the right to bear arms, right? But those are for, were designed for militia groups, correct? Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily designed for militia groups, and everything has rules and circumstances mm -hmm. and, and, and so forth. So when we're saying, you know, the right to bear arms, we're not saying that a criminal and everyone should bear arms, mm -hmm. but we don't want that right to be infringed upon by, you know, law on, on law-abiding citizens. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I've been uh, licensed to carry a firearm for 30 plus years, mm -hmm. and I've used my firearm uh, a couple times to okay. save my life. Wow. And I tell you, uh, it, it's, I don't think, uh, you know, I have children and, and you have the birth of your children, but when you use a firearm to save your life, it's like time freezes, it slows down, and you'll thank God a thousand times in a second that you were prepared and you had that tool on you. Amen. You know? Bruh, we're going to take another uh, commercial break or public service announcement break, and then we're going to bring one Dr. Henderson. Okay. All right, and he'll be with you, and we'll chop it up. Excellent. And we'll be right back. What? <laughs> Thank you for joining us for this final segment of Ignite and Power Transform. Again, I'm your host, Hosea James Gavan II, and we got the Philly crew here. Yes, we do. We're gonna, Thanks for We're going to talk about uh, Philadelphia. You know, I want to talk about Philadelphia. It's, it's, a, it's a place that I've visited so many times throughout my life. Uh, I have fond memories of going to the, to the Greek picnic when, uh, when I was back in my neo <laughs> when I was a neophyte and a few years after that. But, uh, you know, we've been talking offset about the challenges that the city's having right now. Uh, I know um, there's a lot of love in that city. It's, it's known as the city of brotherly love. But it seems like hate is like running rampant in that city. Um, you have to uh, understand, violence has always been the norm in the city of Philadelphia. They dropped a bomb on move. That's problematic. They killed children. So before... When you say they... I mean the police. Okay, you got to be specific. The, uh, the politicians. Right. Um, those in the community who allowed it to happen. Mm -hmm. The bystanders. But now the issue is we're used to outsiders killing our people. Right. Now we are killing our people. Um, not only are we selling drugs to our people, we are lying to our people, we are stealing from our people, and we are taking their bodies. Somehow, it's got to stop. Right. The mindset has got to stop. And so that's why we're here, we're trying to uh, give back. Um, and I think Richard was talking to us about healing. You have to right. save yourself first before you save anyone else. Right, right. 
And, and I know you, you're going to be launching a, a, a nonprofit this year, uh, Brother Oliver, yes. uh, to kind of help to address some of the concerns that exist within our community. Uh, you want to touch on that just a bit? Yes. Uh, like I said, uh, our background is uh, law enforcement training in a security company, mm -hmm. but we've also been, uh, for the police department, the Eastern Division, we've taught their uh, victims of crimes, mm -hmm. uh, self-defense, uh, University of Pennsylvania, African American mm -hmm. Resource Center, we've done some self-defense courses for those people the DA's office, victims and witnesses, services program, we taught them in conjunction with Concilio. Uh, in May, we'll, we'll be in Cleveland uh, training poll workers for the election and de-escalation mm. and safety mm. techniques, and this will be our third year doing that. So That's we'll be real in Cleveland, important, Ohio. Man. These are the things and some of the things that we do. You we need to get down to Georgia, too. Yeah, we would love to go to Georgia, but we do anti-bullying classes. Mm -hmm. and. These are the things that we've been doing for about 20 plus years. So, you know, hurt people hurt people. Yep. And we have some ideas and some things that we know that have worked in the past and we wanna just implement them on a broader basis and offer them to citizens of Philadelphia and elsewhere. So that's what we're gonna start a nonprofit and start doing those type of things and partnering with other people and doing that. And we think it's very, very, very important, you know. Mm -hmm. And just to give people a self-awareness, uh, confidence, and teach them some self-control yeah. and mm -hmm. manners yes. and empathy for fellow man. Yeah. And I think that's just one of the aspects. There are many different aspects, but those are just some of the things that we need to do. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's so funny. You can't legislate all the things that need to happen in our right. community, right? right. And, and some of it has to become, you know, I think uh, the caring part, right. uh, which we need to make sure we have more of, people can care when they felt caring. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right? So if they haven't felt caring, it's going to be very difficult for us to create that from something that has not existed. You have to know what it looks like. Exactly. You have to know what it looks exactly. like and feel like. Exactly, exactly. Right. So we have to continue to uh, have innovative, creative strategies on the different different challenges that we have. But the hardest thing I'm finding is just kind of what we're talking about. How do we, this, the, the caring part, and where you're talking about neighbors, yeah. where it was a neighborhood, now it's just the hood, because mm -hmm. the neighbor part is gone. Uh, that's when, the mama on the block, the, the the grandma on the block, you couldn't, you know, they they had they had authority, yeah. you know, over yeah. your kid. You know, you might not have been your grandma, but we had that kind of self love and 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 and, and, and the unification of a, a belief that we had to all support each other. You, you know, if I can speak to the viewers and the listeners today, that would be about saying something good positive, appreciative, and supportive each and every day of your life. Uh, being kind, being good, uh, just open up your heart just a little bit, just to say thank you, good day, hope to see you again, welcome. Just give some gratitude for every man, woman, and child in your surrounding, in your grips. Help is on the way, but we're really gonna need your hands, your mouth, your eyes to change the world and save the children. We gotta get back. We gotta get back. I need a tissue now, man. <laughs> that, was, that was profound, bro. But you're right. You know, it's, it's, it's a genuine, uh, heartfelt, plea uh, for our for our communities to understand that we got to get back to the old school yes you know we have to uh, really try to see what we can do to resurrect those that old school spirit where we really did it was it, you know it was uh, uh, it takes a village was a real thing uplift the race was a real yeah, thing yes. uh, we were concerned about each other that was a real thing uh, before we, before we wrap this up, how did y'all meet? 
I'm, I'm, I'm curious because I know there's a story behind it because y'all been joking around a lot offset. No, so I was teaching at Temple U University and I saw this guy, um, he, had, he had on the track uh, uh, uniform. So I called security. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So, so, so we're actually uh, fraternity brothers um, and we hadn't seen each other uh, in, in years. And this is true. And I said, I don't even feel like doing no media, no talk show. He said, I'll do it. And then, so he started talking, been on radio, television, um, newspapers, uh, speaking, um, just doing a whole bunch of, I'm proud of you. Thank you, thank you. Black man, I love you too. <laughs> I love you too. Yeah. But I, we actually met, I was 18 years old. I was at really? uh, Philadelphia Textiles, uh, it was Philadelphia University. Right. Now it's Thomas Jefferson University now, but okay. I uh, was a freshman at uh, Textiles and I went to Temple to be in the interest group to find out and pledge Alpha Phi Alpha. And that's when He's, I met him in 1986. He was 18? Nin since I was 18 wow. years old. That's 18 dope. years old. So, it's all a lie. <laughs> uh, pledging at Temple University was the okay. city chapter of uh, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, and that's when I met him. 37 plus years and no, ago. And no regrets? And no regrets okay. whatsoever. That's, no you, regrets. You about the first person to tell me that. <laughs> no, he got a door. Of, no, no, he got a door out, out the deal. He got a door oh, out Jesus. the deal. <laughs> <laughs> in all seriousness, I, I really want to thank you both for uh, for coming up uh, here to New York City from Philadelphia. Maurice, um, continue to do what you're doing, man. You, uh, you're one of the saviors for your city. Uh, Brother uh, Oliver, it's been a pleasure getting to know you, and I'm looking forward to collaborating with you uh, in the future. Absolutely. Right? Thanks thank for you. having us. We thank you. Thank right. you. New York. And thank you for joining us for this episode of Ignite, Empower, Transform. I was your host, Hosea James Gavan II. And remember, if it's in your heart, do your part. Today's help equals tomorrow's hope. I love our youth. Power to the people.